guys, what's up? And welcome to episode four of Cooking with Remy. Do, 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 do. Let's get cooking. Today we are making fair foods. I don't know about you guys, but I love myself a summer fair, a county fair. I don't ride the rides, but I go for the food. If you can't make it to a fair though, don't worry. You can make the food in your own house and sometimes it's even better and cheaper because they charge a lot for that stuff. I am so excited for this episode. Let's get cooking. Number one, we are making fried mac and cheese bites. Yes, they are as good as they sound. I actually struggled with deciding where to put this recipe because to be quite honest, I eat this a lot when I'm drunk. Like I had these at the Cooking with Remy launch party recently. Your girl got drunk and they were the best drunchy ever. But you know, also it works for our fair food. So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna start with a large pot. You can use whatever pot you have and we're going to boil some macaroni noodles. To begin, fill up your pot with water. Woo! I guess I don't have to show this. You're literally just boiling your macaroni noodles, and that's it. So my water is on the stove back there. Once the water comes to a boil, you wanna salt it to taste like the sea, that's gonna help season the pasta. Throw whatever pasta it is that you want to use into there and cook it like two to three minutes less than what the box says because we want it to be al dente. Because we're gonna bake the pasta later, you want to undercook the pasta on the stove so that it doesn't overcook and become mushy. The pan we're using today is a nine by 13 casserole dish. I put some spray oil in here. You can use butter, whatever you'd like. And now we can move on to the sauce. Moving on to our cheese sauce. The base of every cheese sauce is going to be a roux, spelled R-O-U-X. I did look that up. This is going to thicken the sauce and make it really luscious and creamy. So the base for this is butter and flour. Start by taking your butter and over medium heat in a large saucepan, throw your butter in, let it melt down. Butter melting, yeah. Once our butter melts down, we're going to slowly add in our flour and whisk it until there are no clumps. If you're using a nonstick pan, use a silicone whisk because you're not supposed to use a metal whisk on that because it'll scratch off all the nonstick and then it won't be good for you. Oh, it smells so good already. Once our paste is formed and it's become a little foamy, we're gonna add in our seasonings and whisk those in as well. I've got, of course, garlic powder, onion powder, salt, Mm-hmm, smells so good. And pepper. And then whisk that again until it's well combined. Once that's all come together, we're gonna lower the heat to low. Beep, 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 beep. Then we're gonna slowly whisk in our liquids. I have half and half, heavy whipping cream, and milk. The half and half and the heavy whipping cream makes this extra creamy. But just slowly whisk it in until it's all nicely combined. You wanna just break it down until all the clumps have completely dissolved. After our liquids are in, I'm going to raise it back up, bring it to a boil, and then cut the heat, take it off, and we'll add in the cheese. Moving on with the sauce, we're going to add in our shredded cheese. I have here Gruyere cheese, which I love the salty flavor that this adds. And then here we have shredded mozzarella and shredded cheddar. I love like the mild flavor that the mozzarella gives with like the bite from the cheddar. I feel like all together it all mixes very well. I tested a lot of different cheese variations, and this one was my favorite. Then we're just gonna mix this all together. Our sauce has come together. It's a delicious, rich, thick, creamy cheese sauce. I tasted it. I feel like it needs a little bit more salt, so definitely taste yours and season to your liking. I realized with these, it requires actually a lot of salt between like the frying process and the breading process. It loses a lot of that salty flavor, so definitely salt more than you think that you should. Our macaroni is cooked and drained. Also shout out to Neon Lace Company for my little pot holders. And I'm just gonna add this directly into our pot with our sauce. And then just mix this all until it's well combined. And homogenous, big word of the day. The sound. Here's the thing, if you want just plain homemade mac and cheese, you can stop right here, serve yourself up. I would serve this with like some crushed hot Cheetos on top. That's what I like to do with my mac and cheese. It is stellar. But 
we're taking this one step further. So I'm gonna pour all this into my greased casserole dish and I already preheated my oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Then I'm just going to level it all off so it's nice and flat. You actually want this to be pretty dense. So kind of press down, make sure that nothing's sticking upwards and it's just one flat layer all across. Now I'm going to place this pan in the oven for 30 to 40 minutes or so and then once it comes out, let it cool to room temperature and then stick it in your fridge for four hours to overnight. We want it to completely harden and solidify. If you're in a rush, you can stick it in the freezer for like an hour or so and then just kind of see where it goes from there. But I'm going to stick this in the oven. With Cooking Show Magic, we have a cold macaroni and cheese that has solidified. I've got oil heating up in the back at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. We have to get the macaroni and cheese out of the dish. Sometimes it comes out smoothly, sometimes it doesn't. A little trick, put a cutting board on top, flip her over. Sometimes it comes out. Okay, yeah, no worries. If it doesn't do that, take your knife and cut it into fourths right down. It just makes it a little easier to take out. Once you cut in, take a spatula and go around the edges. You should be able to lift it out. Getting the first one out is the hardest and then after, it's really easy. Whoa, I did it! A solid block of mac and cheese. So workout mixed with cooking all in one. And then you want to cut them into cubes or you can cut them into like bars, whatever you want. I think the cubes are cute because they're like perfect little bites. I cut them like an inch by an inch, I'd say. And I like to cut the edges off just so they're really clean little bites. Right now I'm just going to do half and save this to make later Later or just eat as normal mac and cheese, but the recipe will make all of them. You guys know the drill, we're doing a breading station. We've got my mac and cheese bites, flour, eggs, and then panko breadcrumbs. And then right here in this bowl, I have all my seasonings in here. There's salt, pepper, garlic powder, onion powder, Italian seasoning, parsley, and oregano. So I'm throwing that all in, and then just gonna mix this throughout. And then you guys know the steps of the breading process. I'm gonna take each individual cube, put it into the flour, put it into the egg, and then put it into the breadcrumbs. Okay guys, I've learned with these, make sure you thoroughly coat each side. There are six sides that you have to worry about here, as well as really get into the crevices of the macaroni holes. It'll just add extra crunch and flavor in the end, and it pays off for the little extra time. Our mac and cheese bites are breaded. We're gonna drop them into the oil. These cook very quickly. You're just gonna wait for the panko to become golden brown. Make sure you flip for all sides to cook, and then drain them on some paper towels. Our mac and cheese bites are done. They smell amazing. I seriously wish you guys could try these. Well, you can, make the recipe. To top them off, I like some flaky salt. I think it looks really pretty. And again, also just like the little hint of salt on these really brings out the flavor. So I like to do some flaky salt on top. I like to do a little bit of Parmesan shavings. I feel like it just really elevates the whole plate right on top. Oof, restaurant quality there. And last but not least, to add a little bit of color, I'm gonna do some fresh chopped parsley. I feel like this really ties the whole look together. And these are our finished mac and cheese bites. Gotta take a taste test while it's still hot. Mmm. That little bit of flaky salt and the salt within really brings out the flavor. I highly recommend. It's so good. Try these out if you like mac and cheese. Moving on to recipe number two, we are making Doritos chicken nachos. I think actually Taco Bell made these at one point. Don't quote me on that. I'm not a Taco Bell connoisseur, but they are delicious. So basically we're making nacho chips out of chicken, rolling them in Doritos, frying them. You can't go wrong. To do this, you're gonna need something heavy. You can use a pan. I use a rolling pin to flatten things out a Ziploc baggie, and then chicken breasts. Now you can buy normal chicken breasts, butterfly them yourself, or you can get thin sliced ones already, which I have here. It makes it like a little easier. And we're just going to place them flat in our bag here. Also make sure to always wash your hands after dealing with raw chicken breasts. Let me wash my hands. Seal it up very well. Then we're gonna take our rolling pin and flatten them out. You want them to be paper, paper thin because they're gonna fry and get extra crispy in the oil. Then once our chicken breasts are our desired thinness, they should kind of be like see-through almost. We're going to remove them from the bag and use a raw meat safe cutting board. Don't use this for anything else. Place her down and we're gonna cut this into little nacho shapes. You don't have to do this, but I just think it's cute and adds to the fun and the carnival feel. I'm just gonna cut these into little triangles so it looks like a little chicken nacho. Moving on to the next step, you need yet another plastic bag and your rolling pin or pan or whatever heavy, you could use a book, whatever heavy object you have. Today we're making Doritos chicken nachos, so obviously I need Doritos, but you can use whatever chips you'd like. You know, this would be great with like Funyuns, potato chips, pretzels, it all be bomb, but 
I'm gonna use this today. So I have Cool Ranch and nacho cheese. I'm a fan of both, but I'm gonna do nacho cheese today. I'm gonna take the whole bag of Doritos. I'm gonna eat one, ooh, two, and then put it in my bag. It's a lot of chips and you're not gonna use all of them, but it's better to have more than not enough trust, especially when your hands are all like eggy and gross. You wanna have everything prepped. And we're just going to crush them up. You can do this in a blender if you want, but I like doing it with a rolling pin because you can control how fine the crumbs get. I want these to be a little bit more coarse and not too fine, but use whatever you have or a food processor works. Perfect. Now we have our standard cooking with Remy breading station because all we've been doing is frying things, but I'm not complaining. We've got our flour, we've got our eggs. This is two eggs whisked up and an empty bowl here to add our last step, which is our crushed Doritos. So just pour these into our shallow dish. Now we're gonna season the flour mixture. I'm going to add in garlic and onion powder per usual. I feel like every recipe, garlic and onion powder. We go through it very quickly in this household. For a little kick, I'm gonna add in some cayenne pepper. Not too much, but I just like a little bit of heat with mine. Pepper, of course, and salt. The Doritos are already pretty salty, so you don't need to be too heavy handed with the salt, but just a little bit obviously adds some more flavor. And to ensure the cheesy flavors throughout the whole chicken. I'm actually gonna use some nacho cheddar. This is popcorn seasoning. You can use any like cheese powder that you have. Anything would be really good, but it just adds extra flavor. And I'm adding three tablespoons of this. And then give it all a good mix to combine. Cheesy flavor throughout. That would've been a good commercial. Now this far into cooking with Remy, we all know how the breading process works. We take our chicken, we're gonna drop it into the flour. One hand for wet, one hand for dry. Keeps things cleaner, keeps things faster. Roll it in the flour, dust off the excess. You can smell the cheesy flavor. Drop it in the egg, switch hands. Twist, twist, twist. Roll it throughout till it's coated. Drip off the excess into the Doritos and then really press those in so it just becomes fully coated. If you wanna be crazy, you can double coat these, but I'm just gonna go with the single. And there we go, Dorito chicken nacho right onto the plate. Our oil is preheating to 350 degrees and then we're just gonna fry them up and they'll be done. Make sure to not overcrowd the pot. These will cook about three to four minutes and then take them out and drain them on some paper towels. All right, our chicken nachos are done. Obviously we need a sauce to go with it. So I'm gonna make a really delicious ranch sauce. We can drizzle on top, super easy. All you need is sour cream. I'm gonna do a quarter cup here in my bowl. Again, with three to four teaspoons of ranch seasoning powder, depending on how ranchy you like it. And then about two tablespoons of water to thin this out and then mix it all together until it's nice and smooth. Okay, our chicken nachos are done. They look so good and they smell amazing. To garnish, I put my ranch into a little squeezy bottle. It looks like ketchup, but I swear it's the Ranch. I also have crushed up Doritos here. I figured it'd add like a nice little extra flavor, a little crunch, as well as some fresh parsley. So let's garnish. All right guys, these are our Doritos chicken nachos. Of course we have to do a taste test. I'm very excited for this. Mmm, oh my God. Mmm! The chicken is super succulent. The flavor is really good with the ranch. I think the Cool Ranch Doritos would also be really bomb with this. Overall, if you like chicken nuggies, try this one out. My favorite drink to get at the fair is lemonade, but today I wanted to make it a little more fruity and a little more fun. So we're gonna make a spiked frozen strawberry lemonade. It's super easy. You just have to throw all the ingredients into the blender. We're gonna start with some ice cubes. Throw those right in. If you don't want it to be frozen, don't put the ice cubes in. Then we're gonna follow up with our lemonade. Followed up by strawberries. I have fresh ones here. You can do frozen if you want them to be a little bit icier. Also feel free to do blueberries, raspberries, whatever flavored lemonade that you want. But I am a strawberry lemonade gal. To sweeten things up, I'm gonna do three tablespoons of simple syrup. If you don't wanna buy it, you can make it simply by just boiling water and sugar together and you have simple syrup. Last but not least, the most fun part, we're gonna add in vodka. Now if you want, you can add in tequila, but everybody knows I I'm a vodka gal. So depending on how strong you want that to be, you can do two shots, you can do four shots, you can do however much you want. But I'm gonna do four today. Two shots of vodka. Glug, 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 glug. Beautiful. And now we blend. Woo! So I blended with the first batch of ice. We're gonna make it a little bit thicker and add our second batch of ice in now. And blend for the last time. Now to serve, we're just gonna pour it up in our glasses. Ooh, it's such a good consistency. Now to garnish, I'm just gonna put a little sprig of fresh mint, and there you go. You got your spiked frozen strawberry lemonade, perfect for a hot summer's day at the carnival. We are now 
finishing up with sweet, one of my absolute favorite foods in the world, slash also fair foods, but like foods in the world, is funnel cake. I grew up going to Knott's Berry Farm when I was a kid, getting the funnel cake there with the boysenberries with my mom, it was our favorite thing. So obviously we need to make funnel cake, but I wanted to put a little twist on it for cooking with Remy, and today we're going to make funnel cake ice cream sandwiches. We're gonna begin by making the funnel cake. I have a large bowl here. I'm going to take Bisquick mix, which is obviously like flour, it's got baking powder, baking soda, everything in it already. It's super easy. Just gonna dump this into my bowl, crack in one egg, add in my cold milk, vegetable oil, and then three capfuls of vanilla extract, and then whisk that all together. I'm gonna ladle it into a big plastic bag, like so. We're gonna cut the very small edge tip of this bag, just like so, really tiny, and then I've got my oil here at 350 degrees. I'm gonna use one of these little ring molds. You can use these for like egg sandwiches or funnel cake, and you're just gonna hold it, and then once your oil's hot, just put your funnel cake mix in there, hold the ring, and keep just squeezing, 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 squeezing until it forms a little funnel cake. very quickly. Now it is time to assemble. So of course you can just eat this like normal funnel cake, sprinkle it with some powdered sugar, put some fruit on top, it'd be bomb. But as I said, we're making these ice cream sandwiches. So we have our ice cream here. You can use whatever ice cream you like. Just make sure it's in a pint for this fun little hack. Take a serrated knife. I've been soaking it in hot water so it gets nice and hot. Dry it off. Take your pint of ice cream, flip it on its side, cut straight down the side. Push it out, and then just sandwich this between two of your funnel cakes, like so. And then you can roll it in sprinkles if you want, or put it in Oreos, whatever you like. You guys know I'm a sprinkle gal, though. Our funnel cake sandwiches are done. Time to slice, and I have a taste tester. Come on in, taste tester. I only want like a bite. Cheers. One, two, three. Oh, I can't buy ice cream, but it's so good. Mm hmm. <laughs> it's good, right? Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. What is this? Funnel cake. Oh. It's really, really good. It's better than any other funnel cake I've had. You heard it here first, ladies and gents. Only one more bite. Say bye to Cooking with Remy. Bye, bye Cooking with Remy. See you guys for episode five. Bye. One more bite for the road. Mm. Wow. It's good, right? Come on in. Coming on in? Mmm. Oh, it's so good. Mm. Mm. Yes. Yeah. So good. This is way mm. Wow.